In this video, I'm gonna be walking you through a very basic approach into how you look at a CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis. In another video, I'm gonna actually show you a more detailed approach into looking at the individual organs, but this is just gonna be a very simple approach. For more educational resources like our HP notebooks, check out medicalbasics.com. And so before we get started, this case is off of casestacks.com. It's a website that uh, has many different cases from x-rays, MRIs, CTs of all different body parts. So be sure to check them out. I'll link them down in the description below. But the first things first is that when you get a CT scan, whether it's the chest or the abdomen, pelvis, there's going to be other parts of it that you're going to have. So obviously you want to look at uh, the different parts. For example, in this is the abdomen and pelvis, but you're going to have parts of the chest. You also have parts of the thighs. So make sure you want to look at that. There's often times you'll see PEs in the lower chest. So the very first thing that I'm going to do when I open up a scan is, uh, you know, obviously looking at the history, figure out what's going on. You're going to be wanting to just have a very cursory view, just looking broadly. Is there anything that's standing out to you? And, you know, if this is the very first scan that you're looking at, maybe nothing standing out to you yet. But what you're going to be looking for is, you know, things that are very urgent. So things like, is there any large mass? Is there any type of SBO? Is the bowel very dilated? Is there some type of dissection that you're seeing? Is there any type of stranding that you're seeing that may key your eye into something in the future when you're actually going organ by organ? And in this situation, there is. I'll talk about that later once I actually go through it. So the very first thing is just let me talk about what the different organs are. So kind of give you the, the lay of the land of what we're dealing with. So this is going to be our liver. Um, there's going to be uh, a few different vessels that we're going to be seeing here. These three that come in, so one, two, three, they're going to come into our IVC. That's going to be our hepatic veins. And then this guy right here, so one and two, going into our portal vein. So these are our right and left portal veins going into our splenic vein. So this is our liver. And then this one right here is going to be our gallbladder. So I'll look at the liver first, look for any uh, large masses, if there's any thrombus or if there's you know any abnormalities within the liver. Oftentimes you'll find very small things, which oftentimes are cysts. You'll look at the gallbladder next. Um, is there any type of stranding? Is there any type of stones or distension? This looks very normal. I and mean, if there's any stranding around it. So that's going to be your gallbladder. Next, you're going to be looking at your spleen. And that's this guy right here. Is there any large masses in there? Is there any type of, you know, focal infarct? Is there any type of laceration or any splenules, which are, you know, not really important, but they can often get confused for masses or lymph nodes. Next thing I'm going to be looking at is going to be the adrenal glands, and that's these guys right here. So these two are our adrenal glands. Is there any type of large mass? You know, the kidneys are very important, especially on your medicine or surgery or in the ED. You know, your patient comes in with flank pain, you want to rule out some type of stones. And you can often get away with just a non-con. Actually, that's going to be the best way to look at for stones, if that's what you're curious of. And so, kidneys over here bilaterally. Ureter is going to be this guy right here. It's actually easier to follow it in this patient in particular on the left side. So, I'm just follow my mouse and that's going to be our ureter. It's going to continue draining and often what it does is it kind of just takes this torturous course and then eventually will dump into the bladder. But this is a very normal course that it goes. It kind of goes and follows the pelvic sidewall and then it goes over the iliac vessels and then into your kidneys. These are going to be our renal veins and then our renal arteries are going to be this guy right here. So the best way to really just figure out is where is it coming from? So this is our aorta and this is our IVC. So, you know, veins are going to come for your IVC, arteries are going to come from your aorta, and so you're just going to follow them back to, to figure out where they're coming from. And here, you know, you just want to make sure that they're not grossly occluded. There's not any type of wedge-shaped hypoattenuation that may indicate some type of pilo. Um, oftentimes, it's actually much more subtle than the textbooks make it look. Next thing is going to be our pancreas, and that's this guy in the center right here. It has a very um, you know, kind of odd course, if you've ever seen the anatomy of a pancreas. This is our uncinate, then our head, our body, and then our tail. So it kind of wraps around. Uh, you know, in young patients like this, you're going to see it very fully. And, you know, most patients, this is not going to how it looks like. It's going to be much more fatty uh, and atrophied. And in this one, it's very normal in terms of no large masses 
or any type of pancreatic duct dilation. And what we're looking for here is this, this thin line here is our uh, pancreatic duct. It, it courses al along the whole pancreas. In a normal situation, you should not see it. Or you may be able to see it very subtly, kind of up to three millimeters. But once it starts getting dilated, if, if there's dilation, you might consider is there some type of mass that may be causing this downstream dilation. So that's going to be our pancreas. Next thing after that, what I do is I look at the bowel. So this is going to be our stomach, and this was our esophagus. So the esophagus links up to the stomach right here, and then we get into our duodenum. And so this is going to be our first portion, our second portion. Our second portion is going to go into our third portion, so it's going to be more horizontal. If you ever have looked at uh, the anatomy of, uh, and I'll look at it on coronal view, it kind of comes down this way and goes across. This is our second portion and then our third portion, if you can imagine in a coronal view. This is our third portion, fourth portion, and then into our jejunum. And then we'll kind of look just grossly at the small bowel. You know, you can follow it. Um, and, and when you have a SBO, then it's going to be much easier to follow. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to be easier to follow. You know, in, in this situation, what you're just going to be looking for is just grossly. So I look at it in quadrants of the small bowel specifically. So you look at it quadrants, another quadrant going down, another quadrant going up and then another quadrant going down. Is there any type of gross abnormality in terms of significant dilation? This one is very normal in terms of the bowel. The next thing that people find very difficult is running the bowel from the bottom up. So usually what I do actually is I start from the bottom up and then I go from the top down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the bottom, go to the rectum. And the bowel is difficult because it, it loops up and down, up and down, left and right. What I'm doing here, I'm scrolling up and then I lose it here. So then I have to scroll back. Oh, then it connects here. So you scroll up and scroll down. So now I'm scrolling back down. And then now I lose it again, but then I see it loop here. So I'm scrolling back down. And then finally I'm going up and you lose it again, but then you, you see it come across here and then go across here. So this one's very, very mildly torturous. This is kind of the typical appearance of of how the bowel, especially uh, down in the pelvis looks. But you have your transverse colon. I am actually was going down. I was scrolling down on that. And then I'm scrolling back up. And then here you get to the hepatic flexure. Then you start to see the portion that's going down, 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 down. Um, and then you're going to be finding where the ileum connects with the, uh, the cecum. Uh, so this was the, the ascending colon. This was the transverse colon right here and then this right here was our splenic flexure down into our descending colon so the other thing that you're going to want to obviously look for is uh you know where is the appendix in this situation you'd be like oh where, where's the appendix you know usually it comes off either here or here uh well this is our appendix right here so it's uh, you know massively dilated there's a appendicular there's stranding around it so this is you know pretty clear-cut appendicitis uh not so important in, in terms of this case, in terms of, you know, our goal is into really just looking into the different organs rather than actually diagnosing. So next thing after that, what I usually look at is the vasculature. So I already kind of talked about the portal veins going into the splenic vein. So here you'll see the portal vein and then it'll go into the splenic vein and this will be somewhat torturous going into the spleen and while I'm scrolling down now that becomes into the SMV and you're going to follow that it's going to have many different tributaries that are go into the, the bowel and then if we follow back the splenic vein what you'll see is you'll be able to follow the the IMV and sometimes it's a, a little bit more difficult to see but that's that guy right there so the IMV will either link into uh, more off of the splenic vein or into the portal confluence um, into the portal vein and that was that right here and really what you're looking for it will course all the way down and it supplies the majority of your colon and then you can just kind of follow it into many different vessels here what we'll follow next is we're going to follow our aorta that's this big guy right here i mean this situation is very normal um, but you can imagine you can get much bigger there can be uh, atherosclerosis this is going to be our celiac trunk um, going into our hepatic arteries and then this is going to be our splenic artery uh, and then the left gastric should be somewhere here as well i think it's probably this guy right here that came off and really what you're going to do is you're just going to follow the different vessels to see where they go to and then that's going to be what they are that's the easiest way because there's so much different anatomy in terms of variance 
but grossly you're going to have you know the celiac trunk your SMA is going to come up next and then after that you're going to have your IMA and so that's going to come around somewhere near where the the renal arteries come off of uh, and so that was this guy right here so this is our IMA um, and so then it's going to branch off into our iliac so our common iliac and then go into our external and then if you saw earlier this was also our internal and there's many different arteries that are going to be coming off of this uh, on both sides right so our external and our internal and then those are going to follow likewise from our, our venous system as well so you can follow those as well i talked about pretty briefly about in terms of the the renal arteries and the renal veins um, so those are those and then what i do next after that is i'm going to be looking at lymph nodes and the, the reason why you do that after the the vessels is because lymph nodes oftentimes are going to follow well not often they, they are going to follow your vessels so you know the major stations that you're going to be looking at for is going to be you know your gastrohepatic your portal cable, aortal cable, these I just kind of call retroperitoneal, and then any type of peripancreatic lymph nodes. There's many different stations that are much more in-depth than what I just talked about, but those are just kind of grossly what you're going to be looking for. All these little guys, if you see them, they'll come in and out. So that little guy, this little guy, this guy right here, they all kind of come in and out. These are just going to be normal lymph nodes. They're not enlarged, so that's like your biggest one. Really, anything above a centimeter is when you start thinking about it. And then you're going to also have many different uh, lymph nodes in the omentum um, and near the bowel, especially like in this situation, you have you know appendicitis. You're going to see all these little things that come in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. And I'm just scrolling up, and then now I'm scrolling down, and you're just going to kind of see them all come in and out. And those are uh, lymph nodes as well, just kind of reactive lymph nodes. It's kind of to be expected. But, you know, in patients with lymphoma, you're going to have a lot of retroperitoneal lymph nodes. You can also follow them along the iliacs, along the track. So you're going to have lymph nodes here in your inguinal lymph nodes. These often get quite big. You also follow them down into the pelvic sidewalls, another location. And again, you're going to be following the internal iliacs. And then here as well. So those are the, the major lymph node stations that just kind of grossly what I look at. And the next thing after that is I'm going to be looking at the pelvic organs. Well, I guess before I'll, I'll just talk about the bladder. We kind of talked about this before when we were talking about the uh, ureter. Oftentimes these are going to be very distended uh, because they haven't had any type of anything to drink recently. And this one it's, it's fairly well distended, I think, because this one may have been a trauma that came in. Anyways looking for large masses, any type of wall thickening or stranding. Oftentimes when this is distended, it's going to look like there's wall thickening, but really it's just because it's it's under distended. And then you're going to have your uterus here. It's going to have an IUD. And then here's one ovary. Oftentimes you won't be able to see the ovaries that well. And here's the other ovary. And then the uterus as well as the IUD right here. And then the other thing after that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scroll through and I'm just going to be looking at the bones. And I didn't talk about the window levels and all of that. Um, I think it's not as important this time around. I'll, ha I'll kind of talk about it more in detail uh, later. But you have different windows that you look at different organs. I use one window for the whole thing, but that's not necessarily the case in reality. But that's just more for simplicity. So you're going to just be looking for all the different ribs, see if there's any rib fractures. What I typically do is I'll, I'll start in, in third. So I'll look at the anterior, the lateral, and then the posterior, and I'll do that on both sides. Just go up and down, up and down. And then you're just going to follow the vertebral bodies. You're going to follow the first, the, the anterior elements is what I like to do. Follow that all the way down. Then I'll go up and I'll follow the posterior elements. And then what you're going to be doing is you're going to be looking at the pelvis. And is there any large fracture? And you'll get a lot of the, the pelvis and the femoral heads as well. So the last thing that I'm going to be looking at is going to be the soft tissue, right? So the soft tissue, you're just going to be looking, going into the, I split up in quadrants as well. So the anterior, anterior right, the posterior right, go up and down, left, and then down. You know, here what you're, you're looking for is there, you know, edema, is there stranding, is there any type of gas there, any type of large defect that you may be seeing. Obviously, if you're looking for masses and things like that, but yeah, that's grossly what I look for in the soft tissues and specifically what I look for on an axial image. 
So the next thing is going to be looking at uh, what we just saw in the axial view and the coronal view. And oftentimes clinicians find this easier to look at because uh, this is more what they're used to. They're used to reading x-rays and KUBs. Um, and so this is just the, the same plane as, as, as those. Um, but you know, you're going to be looking at certain things that are going to be easier to see in this situation, certain things that are going to be easier to see in an axial plane. So you just got to get a little comfortable with, with all of the different planes. So here again, I'll just point out certain things on the coronal that um, I look at in particular. You know, here you'll look at the hip joints. Uh, oftentimes you'll see uh, fractures here or jam changes or whatever it may be a little bit easier. You look at the spine as well. And obviously you'll look at it in a bone window. This is the soft tissue window that I have here. Here also you'll be able to look at the vessels as well pretty nicely in terms of where they're branching off. You'll also be able to see that in the sagittal plane. Portal vein is very nice in terms of the portal and the splenic vein. And then bowel sometimes, oftentimes with uh, small bowel obstructions, you'll be able to follow the bowel a little bit easier. But this is like what I was saying before. So when we go from the rectum, go up, see it's, it was a little bit curved. And then eventually we got, uh, so this was the, the bottom kind of going up. And then it, it looped around here and then looped around here to our sigmoid and then to our ascending colon. And you see how it kind of has this very normal course. Here's our transverse colon. That's why I was scrolling down in the axial image. You know, oftentimes it'll just go straight across, but it is, it's not abnormal for it to be a little bit redundant like this. And then you'll see the it'll go up to the splenic flexure and then down into the descending colon. And then here's you know our very large appendix uh, right here. Right, this whole thing is our appendix. That, that's very very abnormal. So those are the main things, and then also renal lesions and a, a pilo as well is oftentimes easier to, to see on this coronal plane. PE, sometimes you'll see them here as well, or if you want to just have a plane of a, of a almost like a chest x-ray, you'll be able to look at the lungs easier here as well. So on the sagittals, you know, what we're going to be looking at is going to be, the main things that I look for on the sagittal is going to be the bones. I look at a lot of different organs as well, but I think the most important thing is they're going to be the bones and the vessels. And if there's anything in particular that you saw on a different plane that you want to look at again, obviously. So here I have in a somewhat of a bone window, we have all of our vertebral bodies. And so these times often will we'll get crushed either the whole thing or it'll be more of like an anterior wedge deformity. They're somewhat difficult, or quite difficult, I should say, in terms of determining the acuity of these. So oftentimes, we'll just kind of comment on them, and you have to either compare with prior or um, kind of push on their back in those different locations to really see the, the, the fracture. The other thing is going to be the vessel. If there's any you know dissection or it's aneurysmal or if there's any thrombus, you'll often catch them only on the, the, the sagittal plane for these small thrombi. Or they'll be a little bit easier, I should say. So this is our celiac and our SMA, and this is our AO order here and then some of the you know the pelvic organs are going to be a little bit easier to see in in some respects on the sagittal plane as well so this was more of just a, a very cursory broad overview what is the different in general anatomy of the, the ct abdomen and pelvis and kind of how i approach it uh, in another video i'm going to actually walk you through how i look at each individual organ and what you may be looking for be sure to check out our website, medicalbasics.com, for more educational resources like our medical ID cards, scrub notes, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and lessons.